you be with us and guide us. Good morning. Thank you, Kurt, for that heads up. Thank you. 
Number 680.
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson this morning comes from Joel. You may find it in the Pew Bible on page 832 or in your bulletins. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain, as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain, the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army, which I sent against you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other. And my people's, people shall never again be put to shame. Of my spirit. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves in those days, I will pour out my spirit. I will show portents in the heavens and on earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes, when everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape, as the Lord has said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 65, found on page 672 of your Book of Common Prayer. 
Please respond by the whole verse. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vow be performed in Jerusalem. To you that hear prayers shall all flesh come because of their transgression. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you will blend them out. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, <clears throat> O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. You make fast the mountains by your power. They are girded with might. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaming of their waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will quiver at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dusk to sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless his increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. The meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. The epistle is taken from 2 Timothy and can be found in the View Bible on pages 1085 or 1087. I am already being poured out as libation, and the time of my departure has come. The I have fought the, the good, good fight. fight. I, have I have finished, finished the race. race. I, I have kept the faith. faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them, but the Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me, from his heaven, and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. 
Jesus told his parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income, but the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven. But he was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. So my name is Brian Gross. Um, I was, for those of you that may not know, I was here many, many, many years ago when I was raised up in this church to become a priest. And this is actually the first time I believe that I have ever preached in this space. It's wonderful to be here. It's wonderful to see you all today. I've had some time lately to sit around and not do a whole lot, taking some time off. And so that means watching TV sometimes. But I've come across something that enthralls me, mesmerizes me, and I can't help but watch. Bob Ross, The Joy of Painting. It's wonderful to see a man sit there and paint, and within half an hour, with his palette knife and a two-inch brush, make lines and push and make beautiful trees and shrubs and all of the different things. And when he goes along and he says, when you make a mistake, turn it into something. If you accidentally put something there, it becomes a bird. He tells us in your painting, this is your world. Do what you want. If you want a happy little tree over here, put a happy little tree over there. A nice stream running through. It's your world, he tells us. What a nice thought. What a nice thought to sit there and create your world how you want to see it. To put things the way you want them to be on that painting. Of course, I've tried it, and it doesn't look near as good as his, or even anything like his. I don't know how he does it. My world's kind of a mess when I do it. But thinking of that and creating your own world, it got me to thinking, how often do we think in our minds that we are creating our own world? And we are, really. We've been left to our own devices. We create our own world. We put it the way we would like to see it be. We know that in this world that we've created for ourselves that we need to become as educated or trained as we possibly can so that we can do the best job that we can. So that we can be as good as we possibly can in whatever trade or field or thing that we desire to be in. A painter, perhaps, to be the best. And in this world that we've created, it seems that when we want to become the best or rise to the top, that means that there are others that are below us. We've kind of created a creative world around us as we've set out to paint the world and create it as we would like it to be. Our world 
that we live in today is different from the world that God created, the world that God tells us is the kingdom of God, God's plan, God's world, God's dream. And all those years that people were left to their own devices to decide how best to fit into God's dream, God's kingdom, the kingdom of God, we see that people decided, this is how I need to pray. This is how I need to act. This is how I need to go to church and how often I need to do that. This is how I'm supposed to be. And we see that today in our Gospel reading. Today we've got a man that comes forward that's a Pharisee. A Pharisee who was really very learned in the Jewish laws and the Jewish ways. And his job was to make sure that other people did exactly as they were supposed to do as well. That they followed the rules and the laws. That they prayed as many times as they were supposed to. That they tithed. That they went to the, the church, the the, see the rabbi, that they spent the time that they were supposed to. And this guy went around and made sure everybody else did it, and he made sure he did it too, because he knew. He knew what God wanted him to be, and us to be, to be part of the kingdom of God. It was right there in the literature. It told him what to do, told him what not to eat, told him what he could eat, told him what all to do. So he was following everything precisely. And that day he went up and he said, God, I have been doing everything just like you told me to. He comes out of this one as a bad guy. But he's just doing what he is supposed to do. But Jesus points out to the people listening, that it makes a difference in what you do and why you do it. If you're doing it just because you're supposed to be doing it, then you're not doing it the right way. We do that today, I think. We do things that we think are supposed to be right. We do things that we think that God wants us to do. We want to be the best at what we can do because we have that vision of what God wants us to be and what God wants us to do to be in this kingdom of God, to be in this church. And thank goodness that we are Episcopalians because we know how to do it right, not like those other churches that don't accept people and that are mean to people or maybe don't wear the right robes. Thank goodness we're Episcopalians. Thank goodness we're doing it the right way. But that's not what the kingdom of God is all about, is it? And it took Jesus coming down to tell everybody around them who thought that the kingdom of God went a certain way and thought that they had to act a certain way. And Jesus pointed out to them that everything they do needs to be done with love. Everything they do needs to be in worship of God and know that God is the Holy Creator. Everything they do needs to be for the love of their neighbor. It doesn't matter how many times you kneel to pray, how many times you go to church, how many times you needle your children to hurry up and get up because we've got to get to church, how many times you attend a potluck supper, how many times you go and visit somebody at their house if you don't do it with love and don't do it with the worship of God. Then Jesus tells us this parable and says, that is not the righteous way. Doing things the righteous way means that we are in a good relationship with God. And that's all God wants. If you were to pray once a year, and the rest of the time you were out loving your neighbors and helping everybody else, that's what makes God happy. That's what being part of the kingdom of God is all about. So when God painted this little kingdom of God and had this dream for us and, and put us in that painting, what brings God joy is to know that all those parts complement each other. All of those parts 
of this kingdom, all of those parts of the dream are loving each other. And that's all Jesus asks. Be happy with what you do. Be happy that you pray. Be happy that you go to church. Be happy that you are doing everything you can. But do it for the right reason. Do it because it's the right thing to do for God, for your neighbor, and for yourself. Amen. Amen. Let us uh, rise together and say the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshiped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church. That, that we all, we all may, be may be one. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name is We pray for all authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We pray especially for Larry, comfort and strength and courage for his family for Steve for continued healing. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have etern entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for safe travel for those who have gone to Israel, including Father Jim, Cami, and Lara. We give thanksgiving for Lena. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, 
and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Now turning to page 360 in your Book of Common Prayer, let us confess our sins against God and others. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now let us rise together. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, Jim. Peace, Shirley. Hey, Court, will you let um, Brian know that I'm watching the service from the Sea of Galilee? Absolutely. During, during the announcements. Where did everybody go? Go ahead and mute that, Jim. Once this morning, maybe seated. No announcements? Birthdays? birthdays? Any birthdays to celebrate? Birthday blessings, anniversaries. anniversaries. <laughs> What's that? Oh, nice. Well, welcome to everybody that is watching from the Sea of Galilee. It's wonderful to have you here. Gosh, what a neat, neat world that we live in today that we can do that. Well, there being no other um, announcements, I did want to ask your favor. My father-in-law, Larry, is, we've brought him home. Um, he is now hospice at home. We are not sure if it'll be one or two more days, but we're sitting with him and, and being with him and praying with him. And I would ask us to all pray together if we, if we could. Let us pray. Lord, I ask your peace upon Larry that this time of transition before he comes home will be filled with comfort and without pain, and that you will receive him with open arms. Lord, I ask you to be with Joyce and Scott and Julie as they go through this time of transition as well of losing their father. Just ask you to be with us in that house, that your peace will be there and your light will shine perpetually and all will know your presence amongst us all. This we pray in your name. Amen. Thank you.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Our Eucharistic prayer today is prayer C, found on page 9 of your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal element, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return through prophets and sages. You revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining our joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, 
eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he took the cup of wine, he gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption, and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord, God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And remember, all are welcome at this table.
Let us pray together, saying, Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brian, did you want to come up and... We're going to send Brian out today to deliver this communion from all of us shared with this body of Christ to the body of Christ that wasn't able to be here today. Lord, I ask you to go with this and with Brian today. Our recessional hymn today is hymn number 686.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.